Welcome back to Bible Basics for New Believers. My name is Ray. Today we are going to look at how world history intersects with the Bible and see how God calls a people for himself in the book of Genesis. If you want to learn to read your Bible with both confidence and understanding, be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss any of these videos. We will be spending a little bit more time in the Old Testament than the New Testament, and there's some reasons for that. 75% of the written material of the Bible is in the Old Testament, only 25% in the New Testament. The period of time covered by the Old Testament is thousands of years, versus only about 100 years for the New Testament. So logically, it is going to take us a little more time to understand the Old Testament. You may have heard that the Bible is fable or that the Bible is myth. When we look at the narrative books or the historical books today, you will see that all the major powers of the ancient world intersect with the Bible at one time or another. The major powers were Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Persia, Greece, and Rome. From Genesis to 1 Kings, Egypt is the dominant power. When we come to 1 Kings, it is beginning to wane in power. When we come to 2 Kings, Assyria assumes the power at the beginning, and towards the middle and end of 2 Kings, it is overtaken by Babylon. After Babylon, the people are taken into captivity for 70 years. And during that time, Babylon is overtaken by the Persian Empire. And as we come into the last of the narrative or historical books, Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther, Persia is in control. During the intertestamental period, that 400 years in between the Old and the New Testament, Persia is in control at the beginning, but then cedes power to Greece. Greece, uh, we do not have any specific interactions uh, recorded in the Bible, but the New Testament is written in Greek, and our arrangement, as we mentioned, of the Old Testament books is from the Greek translation of the Old Hebrew Scriptures, and it's called the Septuagint. So Greece has an effect that way. At the end of the intertestamental period, Rome takes power from Greece, and as we open the New Testament, Rome is now in control of the world. As we look at these narrative or historical books on our chart, those that are in green, we can see that most of these are in chronological order, except for these, Ruth, Esther, First and Second Chronicles. Ruth occurs about the 10th chapter of Judges, Esther occurs about the 6th and 7th chapter of Ezra, that is the time between the first and second return of the Jews from exile to Jerusalem. And first and second chronicles is the repetition of the material that is in 2 Samuel and 1 and 2 Kings. Let's briefly consider some of the major themes and events of the historical books. And today we will be focusing on Genesis and in future videos be looking at the rest of the historical books. As we begin in Genesis, we have the creation. We next have the fall, and it is significant in that sin now enters the world. As a result, sin begins to prevail in the world and God has to judge and brings a flood and saves only Noah and his family. After the flood is over, the people are instructed to go and populate the world. But instead, they stay in one place and begin to build a monument to themselves. And God punishes them and keeps them from doing this by confusing their languages and makes them scatter. And this becomes the basis for the development of nations. After that, God establishes a covenant with Abraham, and that covenant promises Abraham that he will be a father of a great nation. 
he will have land for that nation, and that through the nation of Israel, the whole world will be blessed. Ultimately, that is fulfilled in Jesus Christ. So after Abraham, we have his son Isaac, and then we have Jacob. And oftentimes we see in Genesis, God referred to as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of the covenant. Jacob is significant in that he is renamed Israel and that his 12 sons will become the 12 tribes of Israel. The most important son of Jacob is Joseph. You may remember him from his coat of many colors. And he is sold into slavery into Egypt by his brothers. And in Egypt, because of circumstances orchestrated by God, Joseph rises into power to become second only to Pharaoh. When a famine strikes, Joseph's brothers come to Egypt to get relief. And through the process orchestrated again by God, they are reconciled to Joseph. And Joseph moves the whole family of Jacob into Egypt for their protection. And that's where the book of Genesis finds its ending. Now that we looked at how world history intersects with the Bible and see how God has called the people for himself in Genesis, in the next video, we will be looking at more of the historical books. If you are enjoying these videos, feel free to subscribe. Until then, God bless.